Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This one is big, this is huge. We are making a massive, ginormous, gargantuous batch of silicon inlays and then we're gonna use them. So this video is huge, but we are splitting it into all in one video, so it's not a two-parter. If you remember last year, I started making my own silicon inlays using the molds I already had. So I made some absolutely gorgeous pieces, including this tray fell in love with it using silicon inlay skulls and crosses. Now I still do have some of those silicon inlays left, but I've got new molds now. I've got so many more new molds than I had last year. We're gonna use the Let's Resin silicon rubber and we're gonna do it all together. So my advice would be, go grab your molds. Grab all of your molds that you want to turn into your Halloween silicon inlays and let's get making. Now on screen you can see, at your own risk, <laughs> at your own risk. We've always believed that silicon sticks to silicon, but no, it doesn't. It doesn't necessarily stick to a completely different silicon. And we've learned this here as well, where I've made silicon inlays myself. Now, I have all of these molds. I've got some Katie Sue bats. I've got some random Amazon finds. Of course, we've got this potion bottle we could make silicon inlays with, but to be honest, it's a bit too deep for me and what I want for today's project, so I'm not gonna make that one. Here is a batch of Halloween silicon molds that I just recently got on Amazon, and we're gonna use those as well, and not to mention the Finna Bears. Now, last year is when I first started using the Finna Bear molds. I know that some of you feel that the Finna Bear molds are just too expensive for what they are. Um, if you're lucky enough to have a Finna Bear mold, they work beautifully with silicon. So yeah, I really just took my time and kept my fingers crossed that all of these new molds would work really, really well with the silicon. Now this mold here is a cutie. These are actually fondant for cake making molds. Now they're not finished, so obviously there are gaps all the way around. We're just gonna use the ones that are suitable. So we're gonna use the proper 100% filled in gaps and we're not gonna use the whole mold. And it's kinda of like the same with the bat one on the right. I feel like the one on the left is a Katie Sue knockoff, because the one on the right is Katie Sue. It's her brand, I got it from Amazon. But the one on the left looks very, very similar. Different silicon, but very similar style. And the tab at the top has got no name on it. So first thing I need to do is make sure that all of my molds are fully clean. And I thought I would walk you through this as well if you are new to resin. Cellar tape, tape, packing tape is what I'm using here. Does a great job. So I'm just laying tape all across the surface of the mold, rolling it up in my hands. And then it really does take away so much of that resin. And then I'm just going around getting all of the individual bits. Now, Finna Bear. <laughs> That's the photo from the original last year's Finna Bear mold. And now, of course, I've got the potion bottles, so we're gonna play with all of them. The silicon I'm using is the Let's Resin Silicon Rubber. I am a Let's Resin ambassador, and I can tell you now that this silicon rubber has never let me down, apart from when I tried to put old rubber into new rubber, but I had colored it, so it didn't quite stick to itself, but it will stick to itself if you don't add color. This is measurable part A, part B by weight. So that is the first thing we're going to do. We're gonna get every silicon mold that I really want an inlay from, we're gonna lay them out and then we're gonna mix up our silicon. Now we don't need much. I really only did around 90 grams of each and I mixed them up into this pot. It's a yogurt pot, really, really handy for silicon. I decided I'm gonna color my silicon because if you've watched last year's video, you'll know that I like to color my silicon just so I can see it. Um, it just makes it a little bit more fun as well. And every time I make a silicon inlay or a silicon mold, I will make them either a different color so I know kind of roughly what year I made them, but also, if, if I need a silicon mold, then sometimes I'll just keep keep it plain so that I can really, really kind of get to grips and work with it. Okay, it is time, it is time. This is the Finna Bear Clock and Cog Mold and Pocket Watch Mold. It is absolutely gorgeous. Again, I bought all of these myself recently in an Amazon haul. This is the Potion Bottle Mold. Again, I didn't do every single bottle. I mainly focused on the medium to large size. And again, I made quite a mess, but every time I filled one of these molds up with silicon, I just used my lollipop stick to scrape over the surface. So again, 
we are pouring the silicon from really high up off of the desk so that is why it's not so precise. <laughs> you can see I'm not quite hitting the mark. But what I do here is I just put as much in as I'm happy with and then I just use my stick to move it around and make sure that each and every one of those segments in the mold are completely filled with silicon. I absolutely love this mold again this one is a little mold from amazon totally perfect for silicon inlays there is a risk like i said there is a risk that that your silicon mold will react to the silicon and they'll fuse together um but so far so far so good you just have to be completely careful and if you do decide to do this I really want you to do it at your own risk I don't want you coming back and telling me that you've ruined your mold because of me so it really is I'm taking no responsibility here guys if you decide to give this a go like I said this mold here is a super cute little one I just have a gut feeling that it is a Katie Sue knockoff but if you know where this is from then do let me know i just got it from amazon super cute little stars bats and ghosties and i just moved the silicon around until everything that could be properly filled was filled you would have seen this mold many many times this is an amazon classic i actually own four of these molds and i just added some more silicon into the crosses and into the wings that i like again I didn't fill up the entire mold because not everything in this mold is really my cup of tea. So I just went for the two crosses that I love and the two sets of wings that I really, really love. And again, pouring from quite high up. So I'm making a mess, but I just use my lollipop stick to smooth it all out and make it okay. Now, this mold here is a Katie Sue Designs mold. It is filled with beautiful little bats. And again, pouring from high up, making a mess, but then coming down with my lollipop stick to kind of smooth it out and get it as clean as possible. What I don't want is a lot of silicon left on the surface of the mold because then that makes your inlays a little bit shabby around the edges. This one here is another little cute one. And guys, believe it or not, <laughs> This is the last time any of us are going to see this mold. I don't know what happened to this mold. I think when I cleaned my desk to get ready to demold everything, I must have just put this to one side and completely forgot I had it because when I came to edit in the video, I was like, wait, where did that go? Where did that disappear to? I literally need to go into my craft room now and find it and take those inlays out. So sadly, they never made it to the final cut. These are two identical molds bought separately from Amazon, completely different silicon. The one on the left is a super thick silicon, very much like a thinner bear mold. The one on the right is a super soft, squishy silicon, very similar to Let's Resin silicon. The one on the left is matte, the one on the right is shiny, and I decided to try both, making sure that I've got the silicon down into those, <laughs> what do they call them, phalanges? Oh, I hate that word. But yeah, down into the skeletal bones and making sure that I've got every little nook and cranny because these were fiddly, fiddly molds. And also giving them a squish and a, and a stretch, making sure that that silicon has got down and in before giving them a final scrape across the surface to get them clean again. This is the incredible moth and cog mold from Finnebear. You would have seen this last year on my channel absolutely love this mold so much the thing is it does have butterflies in it i'm not a big butterfly lover like i rarely do things with butterflies so we have everything ready we have our potions our moths our cogs we have our ghosts we have this gorgeous little halloween mold we've got the bats we've got the crosses we've got the wings we've got this mold that disappeared out of sight and never got used and we've got the skeletal hands this is the next day we have done it we have made our massive silicon inlay batch again at your own risk i <laughs> i cannot emphasize that enough guys i cannot you just need to do this at your own risk first out a bit of a fail this was the super glossy squishy skeleton um bone hand mold it was super sticky it did come out of the mold real easy but it was so, so sticky, like it hadn't yet cured and completely different with this one. So this is the pink, pretty solid silicon, very similar to the Finnebear mold, 
dry, completely dry. The silicon was a dream. You can already see the difference. Like with one mold being matte, one mold being shiny, there was an absolute stark difference in the silicon inlay that those produced. So the one on the left, I probably won't be using. It's giving me a sticky residue on my hands. Whereas the one on the right, it's dry. You can see it's completely matte and it is perfect. I already knew that this mold worked because I have made plenty silicon inlays from this mold. And again, to get them out, you really just need to start at one end. So just kind of like gently bend the mold and just start kind of rubbing your thumb against the edge and it will peel up. Now in last year's video, how gorgeous are these wings? In last year's video, you would have seen me use silicon mold release spray. You can also do that if you wish. Um, I didn't feel like I needed to at this point, but I did use it in last year's video. That also worked well. And I think for longevity, it might be worth using your silicon release spray just to make sure that your molds don't dry out. But here they all are. Here are the bats. The bats came out super cute. They were so fiddly to get out. But the Katie Sue molds, I can confirm, work perfectly with Let's Resin Silicon. And I'm excited because I've got so many Katie Sue molds now. I know that I'm going to be able to make my silicon inlays using all of her molds because it's the same silicon. And I'm just storing these little bats in between two plastic bags. And this is where it all went wrong. Drum roll. <laughs> I don't know what silicon this is, but I'm guessing that the scientific makeup of this silicon is very similar to Let's Resin. I could not get these out. So we do have just one casualty from this entire project. This is a silicon mold I recently got on Amazon. It's like I said, a miniature ghosties, moons, stars and bats. Really, really cute. But sadly, the silicon did fuse. It completely fused. You saw me there. I could, I could get them out and you can rip them out, but they're definitely not going to stay intact because in some areas they are totally fused. I'm rubbing it like I usually do, rubbing the edges. Usually by now, they'll just peel out. They'll just start to peel out. But absolutely nothing was happening here whatsoever. And again, it's one of those risks I guess I had to take and find out if this was a mold that would work. But big thumbs down for this mold. Sadly, I've kind of destroyed it. I'm going to spend some time trying to pick out the silicon. And I even got the cocktail stick to really try and release that silicon. You know, there's always a suction as well. So I was thinking maybe, just maybe, there's just a suction. Once I get in and under, I can do it. But they were fully fused. Oh, RIP to that mold. This is the gorgeous little random mold that I found on Amazon. I absolutely love it. This cauldron particularly, one of my favorites. And honestly, I don't think you can have too many silicon inlays. I know people have started making their own silicon inlays and obviously we've got some amazing artists here on YouTube, Wendy and Tracy, who sell silicon inlays. So if you don't want to go and buy silicon, then do hit up Wendy or Tracy. I'm sure because guys, I don't sell, you know me. <laughs> I'm too lazy for that. But yes, if not, grab yourself some silicon using my discount code down below and the world is your oyster. It's limitless. The possibilities are endless. We can just dream and dream and every mold we get, we can make inlays from it. Like it doesn't get any more DIY fantastical than that. Now this is the Finnabear moth mold. The reason this was a little bit tricky to get out is because this moth mold has got some seriously deep areas. It's got real deep detail on there. Whereas all of my other molds so far have been pretty flat, but look at the detail. My advice would be peel slowly, peel slowly. Once you've got it released from the edges, you can see here, just rub the edge, it will peel back. But depending on what the inlay is, depending on what the mold is and how much detail is in the mold, do peel them back slowly because at this point your silicon can easily rip. So go slowly, pull slowly, peel slowly and look at all these inlays guys. They are so exciting. So many possibilities. You can use them for so many different things. 
and this is everything we have got to work with for the next half of the video and we're going to be making these into some absolutely wow pendants. Right now, I'm just kind of looking at them, wondering which ones I really, really like and the ones I know I'm gonna use. The resin I'm gonna be using for the first layer. So the layer that we're placing the inlays down in is going to be the high gloss finish from Just View Online. This is a super crystal clear resin. Massive thank you to Molds and Shapes. This is where we get super excited. This is my 100,000 subscriber giveaway. Oh my gosh, guys. Molds and Shapes are fully supporting the giveaway with five of these molds. This is a 9333 pendant mold, each pendant measuring approximately 5.2 to five and a half centimeters in width. And it is a stunning mold. Molds and Shapes are giving away five of these molds in support of my giveaway and they are going to be international wherever you are watching in the world you can enter my giveaway to get one of these molds sent out to you directly from molds and shapes so please do read the description box on how to enter my giveaway and thank you again for 100k i massively appreciate you all back to the video Okay, I've poured a little bit of resin into each cavity. I'm using my heat gun to swirl the resin around and just get as many air bubbles out as I possibly can, but there really weren't that many. Now it was just a case of having fun. I've sped this up for you slightly because in real time it was long and that's gonna turn this video into a one hour video. Nobody wants that. I really just played around with all of the silicon inlays that I had, what works where, what would go together, and, and honestly not thinking too deeply about it. I wanted a mixture. What I did want was Halloween. I wanted to make sure that every single cavity looked Halloween-y um, because obviously I've made clocks and watches and cogs, which is very steampunk, but mixed in with a couple of bats and potion bottles, they are very Halloween. So I just wanted to make sure that every cavity had a touch of Halloween, whether it was a cog, a clock face, or a bat, or a potion bottle, something like that. And honestly, do what you want here. Really do what you want here. Have fun, play around. Bottom left, I'm just putting in a potion bottle with those two wings. I think that will look absolutely gorgeous together. The skeletal hand that worked really well has gone into the bottom center. And again, just finding little things to put around the outside. Now, because I made all of those bats, they are teeny tiny. They're gonna work in any space that I feel like I need to fill up. So if there's a gap and I think mm, that needs something, they're gonna work really, really well. This is where I started to make a mistake. Typical Claire's Crafty Corner. Is it even a Claire's Crafty Corner video if we haven't got any, <laughs> any uh-ohs? You can see me here. I'm thinking, how cool would it be to have this inlay from the back? So from behind. So we've got this initial inlay that's really in your face popping, but then coming in from behind is a super cool clock or a cog or something like that. So I laid inlays on inlays. Can you imagine what happened? <laughs> I don't know why my brain even allowed me to go there. We buried, we got buried. <laughs> this is the next day. I came back and I was like, what have you done, Claire? Why, why would your brain not give you this logical, don't be silly, Claire, because if you do that, that's gonna push that first silicon inlay down into the resin, you're gonna lose it, okay? But here's the thing, guys. Sometimes the universe has other plans and it's worked out like you would not believe. Yes, it was a struggle. Yes, we had to fight. We had to fight to get some of these inlays out of the resin. So right here, you can see me. I've peeled back a layer. Luckily, on some of them, the layer of resin that went over them was so thin and you'll know if you've tried this technique, it just peels off. It peels straight off of the silicon inlay. So for some of them, it was super easy. The cauldron did get stuck. I decided, calm down, come back to that afterwards. That's a problem for future Claire in 10 minutes. We'll work on it and we'll work out what to do. But this one here, my goodness me, did that bottle get 
buried. Now, this was a combination of using a craft blade, using a cocktail stick to dig, really, really dig. I felt like a proper archaeologist digging for bottles. I had to slice away at the resin and try to peel it back to bring out some of those silicon inlays that had got buried because I'd put inlays on inlays. So if you do want to try this, don't don't let my mistakes put you off and get nervous by it. Just do one layer. One layer of inlays, you're good to go. They float, it'll be perfect. Don't try and double up. Don't try and get <laughs> ahead of your station like I did. I totally I totally don't know where I was where I was going or what I was thinking. But like I said, it's all worked out in the end because we've got some fantastical results. So with a combination of brute force, a craft blade that is not even sharp anymore, trying to peel back some resin to release those silicon inlays, it was worth the struggle. Here's the thing. At the time, you know me, I said it in the last video. At the time, my brain is like, can't you just do one thing right? Can't you just film a video where it all goes to plan and have it turn out as it's meant to turn out? Why does life have to be so complicated with you? Um, but yes, as you saw there, I went very, very gently. I slightly pulled on the cauldron and I wiggled it back and forth real slow, real slow to get that silicon and the suction between the resin to, to let go of each other. And then it just popped out and all was well in the world. Now with the cat, I am so sorry cat, I lost part of the tail. Um, so basically I had to use another blade here that is covered in gunk to carve out where the silicon tail was. Um, but at one point I did cut the tail so the tail is no longer on the cat. I'm so sorry, cat. But we've got some really cool, fantastical results. What I did realise is that because we've had to peel back resin and get in and under, there's definitely going to be areas where I'm going to need to really get in and under to get mica powder down in there. So of course, guys, there's no other chameleon powder that is gonna do this job other than the Let's Resin Chameleon Powder. You can see here the cross, you see what I mean? I have to get in and under the resin to get the chameleon powder in because obviously the resin went over the inlay and yeah, it was just a whole thing that just turned into magic. It turned into magic. One of my, I know I say this a lot, but I think I just fall in love. I fall in love very, very easily. I am a Leo. It's what we do. <laughs> that's that's my excuse, guys, for everything. I'm a Leo. I'm allowed to cry. <laughs> but yes, you can see here <laughs> the smoky area or the steam or the smoke, the flames coming out of the cauldron was down under. Like it was super down and under. I had to stick my paintbrush right up and in there to get the chameleon powder in. Now what I did do, you can see all the colours that I chose on the screen earlier. I chose the most Halloween-y, witchy colours that I have in the chameleon set. What I didn't want was all one colour. I really wanted to mix this up a little bit. Wow, Claire, calm down, mixing it up with three different colours. But I wanted to mix it up just to get as many colours as we can in the individual inlays. So the one on the top left, you can see, I did the cross in the plum, but then I did the clock face in the gold, because I thought that is gonna make the clock face proper stand out and pop and all of that yumminess. So really, I just used a whole combination of the gold, the violet, the um, plum, and all of that jazz. There's four colors here. I mix and matched. I, I literally just went with what I fancied at the time, that is the beauty of being able to do this and just having complete freedom over what colors you use and where you use them. Making sure that the backgrounds were slightly different to the inlays and yeah, just really having fun. No rhyme or reason, just making sure also that I get down in because some of these, <laughs> where I laid where I laid inlays on inlays, I really just had to make sure that I get in there like you see me doing here up and under those resin lips that were formed. The bottom three, I decided let's try all one color because what I wanted to do was just compare. I wanted to, I wanted to know, do I prefer multiple colors? Do I prefer 
all one colour. So the one in the middle on the centre is the golden, the one on the left is the plum, and the one on the right is the violet. Um, I just decided, let's just see, let's just see and have a play with all of them. This is what we're looking like. You can see the state of it, where the resin has come up and over and everything it just at this stage looks messy. But I cannot tell you guys. Trust the process. Trust the process. Even if you think you've messed up, I don't know, it just seems to be a thing with me lately. We're all just, I'm just blaming the perimenopause for everything that I do, okay, for the next 10 years. <laughs> everything that goes wrong is not me, it's the perimenopause. Um, so yeah, everything, just trust the process. Next up, we need to fill them with black. Now, there's two ways of doing this. You can either use your epoxy resin or you can use polyurethane in black. Now, you all know that I love anything that's speedy. Speedy doesn't take much time. So that's not the only reason I'm using polyurethane here. This is black polyurethane resin that I bought from I Love Mixed Media. She is getting more in stock this week. So I know a few of you have mentioned that it's out of stock. There is more coming. Um, not only is it fast, it sets within 30 minutes, but because I had to fight each and every pendant, I had to fight them for my life. Um, I did actually break the seal between some of the resin and the mold. So that is the other reason I'm using polyurethane because A, it's thicker than epoxy, cures super, super fast. It won't have time to seep down into those broken seals and potentially ruin my pieces. Now, some of these did overspill because I used my isopropyl alcohol to get rid of bubbles, which did make the resin go out and over. But guys, are you ready? Oh, I'm obsessed. I am utterly obsessed. This is the first one out. This is where I placed the clock down on top of the inlay of the cross and pushed the inlay of the cross directly into the resin. We had to fish the cross out of the resin, but wow. First one out. I also forgot to mention, I don't know why, I actually added some silver foil into some of these, but I don't know why I didn't film it or talk about it. But yes, if you see silver foil, that is because I added some. Next up, we have one of my favorites, this poor little cat. You can see right at the bottom on his tail, we lost some of the inlay in there because I just couldn't get it out, but I'm not angry about it. That's the thing. Some of these, <laughs> some of these have got inlay trapped, completely trapped in the resin that I could not get. And it has worked a dream. This is the beautiful clock face with the cat and the moon. Next up, we have the all over color. I have to say, I'm I'm glad I went with multicolors. I think I prefer using three or four contrasting colors that's gonna make each individual inlay area really, really pop. So this is the potion bottle and the wings and some silver foil in there for good luck. And this one, oh my goodness, guys. Oh, my favorite. Up there as one of my favorites. What happened here? I got the gold down in the flame. This was, again, I had to go in and under for this. I got the gold down in the flame, but when it came to pouring the polyurethane, no polyurethane got down into that flame. How crazy is that? So the flame was gold. I put gold up in there, but the black never made it because the hole to get in there was so small, the black never made it. And that is the result we get. Absolutely stunning. This is one again that had the all over body, the, the all over color. So this was the green gold, I think it, the golden one. Um, again, it's cool, it's cool. The inlays worked a dream. You always get that quilted, puffy, like, they're, like everything's laying on a gorgeous cushion. Look at that skeleton hand, perfection. Again, another one here where I did put the inlay down on top of another inlay, but it wasn't so bad on this one because the layer was so thin we could just peel it back. I'm loving the combination of the potion bottles. There's a gap on the bottom left. I feel like I could have filled it maybe with a bat somewhere, but yeah, absolutely loving it. Another one, pretty simple on this one. We just went with the bat, the witch's hat and the potion bottle. And of course, some of the foil in there as well. But the inlays so far for me are a dream. And of course, if they don't get trapped in the resin, you can keep them forever and ever and ever. This one here is a wow 
wow, what happened here? What happened to this bottle, please? Basically, this is where I put that massive cog on the back. I pushed the potion bottle inlay too far down into the resin. I had to peel it out. I had to pull it out super gently. <laughs> but what that did was it created a cavity. So it created a cavity. You can see the black polyurethane has only just made it to the top. And then just air, air, air got trapped, guys. I'm sorry, what? Doesn't it look like a frosted glass bottle? Insane. I also lost the top of the stalk of the pumpkin. And let's not forget about those poor bats. But this bottle, unreal, unreal. Like the results, I just can't, you couldn't even do this again if you try, like you couldn't try unless you purposely went down the route of doubling up with your silicon inlays to create these cavities. My advice would be, if that happens, get to your resin earlier than 24 hours later. Look at my bats. Those are actually silicon inlays. They got completely and utterly embedded and stuck. And I'm not angry about it because, oh my goodness me, these results to me are about as good as it gets. I think if I do this again, which I will, I'll pack them in again. I will definitely pack them in again. But what I will do is instead of waiting the full 24 hours to go back and peel them off when the resin is rock solid and uh, what am I going to do? I would go back maybe after 15 hours when the resin is solid enough to take the inlays out but still squishy enough to be able to peel it back real easy and get those inlays out with just a sharp blade to cut through the surface of the resin. That is what I would do. So I would definitely do this again by using multiple layers of inlays, well, not multiple, no, <laughs> not multiple. Oh my God, could you imagine two? Just using two layers of inlays, even though the risk is high that they're gonna push the other inlays down in, then I would go back earlier than recommended. Use your gloves, make sure you've got your gloves on, a sharp blade and peel back any resin that may or may not have swamped the previous inlays that you put in. Because to me, the results of the multi-layer far outweighs the results of just putting in one layer. They're, they're, they're cute and all, but they're a little bit meh when you look at the disaster ones. When you look at the ones that shouldn't have worked, but they did, they are un believable. This is probably the longest video on my channel <laughs> to do with resin to date. So massive thank you for me, from me to you for a hundred thousand. I know I'm already nearly at a hundred and three thousand, but I'm always late with giveaways. Massive thank you to Moulds and Shapes for your support on this giveaway and the five moulds that you're going to be giving away internationally. Remember to read the description box down below. Thank you if you've been in the live chat because this was a long one. So I hope you've had your cup of tea and your snacks. <laughs> and I just appreciate you all. I cannot even believe I've reached 100k and I'm very aware that so many would have already stopped this video to go and enter the giveaway. But if you're still here, I literally owe you everything and I appreciate you so so much I will see you all in the next video bye